Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining today from the Department of Aid, Trade, Consumer Protection. It's my friend Michael. He's back and he is ready to. I love the festiveness of the uh, sweater. I think you green, like, plan, like you planned it, and I just was like blue. It's a blue day. It's the holiday season. I was getting in character. It is the holiday season, uh, and we are, are definitely going to focus on some of that throughout the month. But uh, today we're uh, focusing in on price accuracy. And uh, the Department of Trade and Consumer Protection settled with Dollar General on uh, a couple of different items here. And, and I'm not here to point out that a corporation did or didn't or whatever, but I think it's important to learn, folks learn a little bit more of the behind the scenes stuff that goes on. So we do a lot of prevention talk. Mm -hmm. And you guys uh, and gals take on a lot of great uh, projects and and chasing these things down. People report things and things happen, and that's that's kind of what happened here. So, uh, set, first off, just tell us a little bit about what happened here with the settlement with Dollar General. So, within the division of trade and consumer protection, a lot of the times we come in and we talk about issues impacting the Bureau of Consumer Protection, but we also have another bureau, which is the Bureau of Weights and Measures, that is responsible for going out and maintaining the accuracy of anything that really has a measurement. A lot of the times, the attention is focused on fuel pumps and making sure that you're getting what you do, but they handle so many more different angles of how things are measured. Uh, when you go to the grocery store, is two things. One, the scales that are measuring those things are they accurate so you're paying for the volume of product that you're purchasing but then also when you scan at the register are those prices adding up and that's what we're looking at here we're looking at a particular dollar general corporation where when a customer was going up and scanning that particular product the advertised price on the shelf is not what was reflective on what they were being charged and so they went in and identified 662 alleged violations uh, of the price accuracy laws and 53 of the refund policy disclosure which needs to be disclosed uh, conspicuously and throughout that what happened was that Bureau of Weights and Measures went out and checked 7,344 products so they went physically scanned them saw what was posted on the shelf what did it scan up as and of those 662 scanned at a higher price which is about nine percent uh, but we did that in conjunction with a lot of local municipalities that we partner with from Appleton, Green Bay, Kenosha, Madison, Menasha, and, and several others. And on average, those products scan at 17% higher than that posted price. If somebody reports that, you know, like, hey, you know what, I've gone to the same store over and over again, and it yeah. seems like every time I, I feel like the price doesn't match, what does the consumer, what should they do in these situations uh, coming across it both when they're even at the store? Because they could challenge it at the store, uh, and that's what you mentioned with the sign being in a specific area to tell you. Um, but also reporting this, what would you recommend? Uh, first is exactly what you said. Have a conversation with the employee who scanned the product. Bring it to their attention that this scanned up at a different price. If they're not willing or unable to change it, ask to speak with the manager. You know, and always be polite, be cordial. You know, under, help them understand because it very well may not be within their control. Just maybe a system happened to do it. And ask them to correct the price. If you find that they're not willing to do that, or you go there and you repeatedly see these kinds of issues, certainly file a complaint with the, De the Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection. Uh, the Bureau of and Weights and Measures has their own complaint form, which you can fill out, helps them understand it, and what will happen is they'll go out to that particular location and verify what you're seeing and make sure that there aren't additional products that aren't scanning, or maybe it wasn't just a one-off. So definitely file with us. And then at the registers in, in this, the, there, there is supposed to be something that talks about the overcharge mm -hmm. and um, kind of what the store is responsible for doing or the, the, the business, what they're supposed to be doing. And that's supposed to be displayed easy enough for people to see. It is. It's a sign that needs to be posted right there, kind of near the checkout, that explains if there is an overcharge that the customer is entitled to a refund of the difference between the advertised price and the chi in the, in the, the um, charged price. And throughout the inspections during this recent um, kind of look at Dollar General Corporation, we found that 45 of those stores did not have that signage conspicuously placed near the register. And after being uh, told, hey, you need to have this up, after reinspection, eight of those stores still didn't have it up. So that was part of this overall settlement. And so ultimately, uh, in the settlement, it, it, the, the goal here is to make the change, right? So there's a lot of different things going on here. We're not going to get into the details of what happened during the settlement piece. But ultimately, it's in the accuracy of making these prices be accurate and getting 
again, we're not alleging one way or the other what happened here, but um, they need to correct it, and that's how you use the settlement to do that. Always, you know, the whether it be in the Bureau of Weights and Measures or in Consumer Protection or anywhere within, you know, the department, compliance and education is always the first step. Because if we can gain compliance and help them understand how they do it the right way, that's far less people are going to be impacted from that point forward. So, uh, of course, we want to have that. The other angle is making sure that it's accounted for what are going to be those terms and understandings moving forward that there's going to prevent them from continuing to do that activity and also prevent consumers from being harmed. Yeah, a lot of work happens behind the scenes at DATCP, yes. and I think that's uh, it, it's interesting to go through this, and glad you broke it down for us. If people do want to learn more about the weights and measures part of, of what's going on uh, behind the scenes, uh, reporting, any other great information, the website's so awesome to do that. It is. Visit datcp.wi.gov. You'll see a section right there on the front page that will take you to where you need to go, and you can learn more about the issue that we're talking about here today in the settlement and a lot of other things that the Bureau of Weights and Measures can help with. All right, Michael, thank you so much for going through this. Appreciate your time, and uh, we'll look forward to catching you on another uh, another episode. Sounds of great. Thanks.